Hello, hello, hello. I'm here to prepare a meatloaf. Now that would be my style. And I use two pounds of ground pork, ground veal, and ground beef. It's all ground together. And just take it, I already have some in. Little pieces pinch off. And I have a big bowl because I'll, you'll see people what I do. Pinch out the meat, little sections. I'll do one pound, then I'll, you know, then I'll do the other one. Because that's how I mix it. It has to be mixed. So here, rip it in little pieces. Here. Put it in a big bowl. Let me see. I do. Most people. I don't know if I should say Americans, but that's basically what it boils down to. I mean, what I've seen, they go and they use these big meatloaf pans. They use meatloaf mix. You know, there's little packets of meatloaf mix. A lot of people go, they hate meatloaf. Well, I've tried, the, you know, I've never tried it. I've tried eating it when someone prepared it like that. You know, it's, it doesn't taste good at all. I don't believe in the meatloaf mixes or anything. You'll see, I just straight up do it my way. <clears throat> and I don't use a big... It's actually a bread pan to me. They call it a meatloaf pan. And your meatloaf is probably like freaking six to eight inches thick, probably six inches. It, it's gross. I don't like that either. And then you cut it and it's like a loaf of bread. It's really thick and it's really heavy. Mine would be light, fluffy, and yet thin when we see it finished. But right now we're talking about mixing, correct? Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'll do the one pound first like this. Put this in here. I just speed it up. I don't like to drag crab. I'm not too slow at anything I do. So what? I'm trying a little bit higher HD on this, going to 60 frames a second from 30. The movement looks a lot smoother. You remember that other phone? The um, when I move at times, it'd be blurry. Yeah. Or you know, like it would get fo like what did I say, like blurry, and then it would clear up. Because the frames couldn't keep up. Yeah, so let's see how this so turns this, out. So I turned it up to HD 60 from HD 30. And personally, myself, I don't know a damn thing about that stuff. <laughs> I can't know what I visualize, you know. All right, so there's that. I don't have paper. All right, so there's one pound put in. Then I just take salt, and I'm a lefty, so whatever. Yeah, you better know what you're doing, you know, because I don't like, I'm not a person to measure, and I, I know what I'm doing. I like, you know what my taste is, so salt, accent, accent's a little meat enhancer. I believe it really does work. I've tried to do and stuff without this accent, and I notice a difference. It's not in my head, because I, if it, I wouldn't use it. Accent, and just a little bit of garlic, salt because I'm gonna use fresh garlic, which I prefer, instead of all this, you know, garlic salt. So that's salt, accent, garlic salt. And then we'll put some, yeah, some woman said in a grocery one, store one time when I was in, out west, she goes, paparica. And the person I was with said, hey man, it's not paprika, it's paprika. <laughs> and I told the person I was with to shut up because they're not even talking to you. I just, you know, it's a true story. It was fucked up, but whatever. So it's paprika, anyhow. But, you know, when someone says it wrong, it's like, why do I care? They're not talking to me, anyhow. So I did that. And then I have some garlic here. I use four, four small cloves. So I'm going to take half of this garlic and put it on top. And if you're wondering where my onion is, you know what? I don't care for onion in a meatloaf. That's like basically when these people get these meatloaf next or they use onion powder or something. It, it gives it a whole different flavor. I don't care for it. And then you take an egg and you just slightly beat it. You don't want to beat it too much. Slightly beat it like that. That's perfect. And you pour it over. This is the first layer. Then I'm going to do the second layer. And I'll just go over the egg. What does the egg do? I believe it, it helps keep, well, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna put bread in here. I have bread already wet and white bread. 
the only time they see me use white bread. The bread and the egg, it like adheres and it just helps your meatloaf stick together where, you know, cause mine is like really, my meatloaf always comes out um, not heavy. So I use egg and the bread, I, I wet it, I wet it. It has to be not soaking wet, but not, it has to be not dry either. Just, I know, how to, I don't know how to tell you people, but you know, and you don't want it to stick to your fingers. See, when you pull it, you want it to drop real nice. That's when you know you have the right consistency of water in here. But anyhow, it helps it adhere. Like the, your meat, it sticks together, but also it's not heavy. For people, they just put these meatloaf mixes in. I don't even know if they put bread in it. Really, I, I don't know. I know they use meatloaf mix, and a lot of people, sometimes they just use ground beef. That will make it heavy and really greasy. I, mean, I use total, on the two pounds of meat, <clears throat> this is eight slices of white bread. I use nickels. I've tried many, but I, I like the nickels white bread. So, so I don't use onion. And yeah, your bread, you know, you can see how, see how it just falls off. There's nothing stuck on my hand. Now, if you ever get the bread stuck on your hand and it's real pasty, that means your bread isn't, it's either over, overly wet or not wet enough. Mine just flies right off, but I've been doing this for years. <laughs> so whatever, I know what to do. I'm not saying people don't know what to do. I'm just telling you the little tip. So your hands, everything should fall right off. So if you have two pounds of meat, like I have, the ground veal, pork, and um, beef. There's a little beef in there. And then split it. Use one pound. Split it so you have one pound. And do what I said prior. And see that. And it's all coming together. It'll be right. People will see they're like, oh, whatever. It's really good. Unless you like that meat, you know, that's meatloaf mixes in a pan and you like the thickness and heaviness or maybe you just like the taste overall. I don't care for it. And this is the night before. Yeah, this you is have, the prep. Right. You have to, which I was going to say that at the end. I'll, in this case, how I make my meatloaf. I prep it, it has to stay in the fridge overnight, at least 12 hours you want it in the refrigerator before it hits the oven. You want, because all your flavor, like the egg, the bread, all the seed and the salt, the accent, the garlic salt, the paprika, and then when it's mixed together and when I make the loaves, when I flatten them, you'll see, all the flavor just, it all comes together by letting that sit in the fridge overnight, covered of course with plastic wrap, clean wrap. Saran wrap. In the morning, they're great, you know. Then I put it in the oven, and you'll see then you know, when I do that. But yeah, I, I like mine setting overnight. And that could be another problem with people, they don't do that. Okie doke, so there's one layer. Now I have, I'll be back, and the second layer will be a repeat of this. But I'll show you guys how I do it. All right, yeah, we'll have more coming soon. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna use, go ahead and do the last pound. Like I said, I made a two pound pack. So I had to grab a few things and, all right. So let's do the repeat of what I did, how I layered it. It's actually, this do the same thing. So you have to do, and the reason I do it in two layers per pound, so it's easy to mix and your flavor, your seasonings are distributed evenly. You try, you mix it as, you know, putting all your meat in first, and then your season, or your egg, you know, on top, and then the bread. How do you expect your season, the salt, all this stuff, to get through, and your fresh garlic? So, it's not going to happen. I mean, I guess it could happen if, you know, I like my stuff to taste well and good. So, I do it the right way. I don't cut any corners for what. Okay. Let's repeat them. First layer, and then after that, I'll get into mixing by hand. It looks really good. It smells great. This stuff smells I know. really good. 
and it's raw it's not even cooked and it smells good they should have a smell to uh what do you call those phones where you, when people do something the smell would go through with all the spotter technology i mean really smell a phone and smell, smell a vision <laughs> smell a phone smell through the phone right instead of video and talk but uh whatever i can only tell you it smells really good yeah, and as you notice no more samsung galaxy note 8 filming this is iphone 11 pro max and it's a lot better we'll see when we're done huh how, how it really looks to, you know it could probably be well look good the video we'll finish this And I know how good this meatloaf is going to be. It is good. You know what? I think one time, I can remember one time, and of course that's when I was like probably just learning. Not learning. I, I just, I didn't, I don't know. I don't, maybe I should even say it, but whatever. I just made it one time that I recall. It's not like something I make a zillion times, but one time I could actually say I didn't care for my meatloaf. It, the season wasn't right. I, mean, I didn't put enough is what I'm saying. You don't oversee it anyway. You don't want your fucking hair to stand up. <laughs> you know, you want to taste something, a flavor in there. So I don't know what happened. But I went a little too light. I didn't care for it. It was only once. And no, we but do it's... not use ketchup or... No, that's true. That's anything of that nature. I... We're not going to put ketchup it. on it and glaze it or put ketchup yeah, on afterwards. No we don't do that. It's no ketchup. Okay, dog. That's done. So there's a layer gun. And then of course you just layer with the seasoned salt. And on the left, yeah, it might be black and somewhat, but and trust me, if it looks like a lot, you know, like I said, this stuff soaks in 12, 14 hours, normally 12. And um yeah, it's not as much as it's, everybody may you think. Look. You got two pounds of meat, you got the bread to go through. That was salt. No accent. Garlic salt. Fresh garlic. This is what's left out of my four cloves. So, mm -hmm. is that all right? It's like ASMR right there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then, you know what? Paprika. This is just, I call it paprika. It's, it, all it is is um, red sweet peppers dried out. Let me grind it, you know, make it real smooth like this. I could do this myself, but huh? I'm not going to. This one's a good one. I buy it at the store. And the paprika, it, you know, it's a sweet red pepper. It it gives color too, but it also get it, it's a sweetness in there. It gives a nice taste. Sweet paprika. Mm. It's good. And and the same thing. We're gonna do the egg. We don't eat it real well, lightly. Beaten. Just pour it over. Not one spot. Try to. Sometimes it happens. You, know, you want it to lightly. Try to get it all, all over. Ah. It's all again when you mix it. You know that's why you try to distribute it all over. Where you have all this clump of egg in the middle, and you go to mix it. It's harder to mix. Yeah. Makes sense. And then and the bread. That yet. Wet some bread. Like I said, if it sticks to your fingers, it's either, I would say more, it's either too, too wet 
Well, if it's too, too wet, it really fall off probably, but it's not wet enough. And then your, your bread is, I guess it comes real doughy, huh? It'll stick on your hand, mine's, the, and you got it right, one stick, and it drops off very nice. I just try to distribute that. I use 16 slices, as I said. Eight slices per one pound. I need more slices right now. It's a total of 16 slices. I use Nichols white bread. Looks and smells really good. It just good. smells really good, and uh, I thought this is gonna be a good one. <laughs> oh yeah. Trust me, it smells good, and it's not even cooked or anything. It's raw meat and all the seasons. It will be very good. Okay, I'm gonna add just a tad more salt. Two pounds of meat on top, and that will be it. Normally I do not do that, but I'm just feeling it needs a little more. Oh, it smells very good. I want my hair to stand up, but it won't. It's <laughs> a lot of stuff in there. All right. And this I'm just going to add a little bit more. I'm talking little. Your hair won't stand up unless you're Don King. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty screwed up, isn't it? <laughs> he does. And then um, this all needs to be mixed by hand. And what I have to do, I'm yeah, too close. I have to set this bowl here. You see, and when, and when you mix, don't just grab it and go like this. Take it and basically fold it so you're getting everything from underneath. You'll see how wet this is, and then watch the finished point after it's all mixed. It'll be nice. Then, after you fold it, then you go like this. Don't just dig in right away, and then you can still fold it. This will all absorb. You guys will be surprised it all go in. It'll be, oh, yeah. It'll have such a nice texture. If it stays this wet, you're not going to have good meatloaf. I would never even want to try it like this. That's all gonna soak in. It'll all be gone. It'll have a real nice texture. Let's see. Don't want to leave it wet. This is where the bread, I believe, all comes into play too, the bread. Because the bread you know, absorbs all this stuff. It's absorbs all the flavor, but the bread also, like I said, it gives it a light. Some people say, oh, it's heavy. Well, no, it's white bread. That's why you use white, not Italian or anything. It's straight up white bread. And it is according to how you mix it. People may think I'm nuts, but it it's really is. A lot of stuff, you know, you have, you need it, like when you eat bread. This stuff is basically almost, you know, you fold it. You could already see how it's drying up. Yeah. They're not drying up, but I mean, it's coming together. When I started, it was very wet. I hope it'll pick up right in this video. Boy, this smells really good. <laughs> it's old school, you know? Maybe not, I don't know. I don't know what people do these days. I don't watch other people cook. I don't care to. I just don't cut any corners when I do stuff. I do it right. And if you're, like, if this stuff really sticks to your hands like crazy, your hands are just full of meat and stuff, I guess that's already telling you your bread isn't right. It wasn't, some, it would be in the bread for me, or maybe the egg, maybe use too much egg or not enough egg. That's why I gave you, I said, I stated I used two pounds of this ground meat and how I do it. So then it should be fine. And actually seasoning, you just have to, I don't measure, never did. 
just had the talent for baking and cooking. I have to bake something on time. Yeah. No, because I could really bake some good shit. Good stuff, actually. From scratch. No box crap here, but all scratch like this. Let's see, this all came together, people. You can see the pup the paprika was like I said, it's a uh, sweet red pepper. You don't even see it. Gives the meat a tad of color, but you know, I mean, you won't want your meat red. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the smell is really great. It smells really good. And yes, I don't care for onion. I need to see this to me earlier. I don't use onion. Well, you like onion, but not in meatloaf. Not meat in meatloaf. So. Right. I don't care for it in meatloaf. So. It came together nice. Look at how nice. You remember when I started, this was all wet. Yeah. See the garlic, the bread? That's what you want to see, you know? That's cool. See how nice it's not even all stuck in the key to the bowl? My hands so-so. It's all formed together. It, it all formed together, right. It's like when you make dough, you know, pie dough or anything, you want it to all come together. It sticks on your hand and stuff. It's not good. It needs to come off. So, you don't want to mix the hell out of it either. <laughs> you know, don't beat the crap out of the meat. How's that? That sounds funny, bad. It's bad. That's okay. Beat the meat. I don't know what to tell you. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> there you go. So, I got this good. See how nice it's together? Oh, yeah. And I can literally pick it up and turn it. It's, it's great. Okay. You're going to have somewhat stuck to your hand, but I mean, mm. if your hand's really loaded, that part you have it. Underneath is where it counts. That's just stuck because it was on top, but that's how you want it. Right, so that's good. That's all you do. Now I'm going to form it. I'm going to take a knife. And I'm going to cut it in three. Then I'm going to show you how I make my little meatloaves. And people might go, ooh, but you know what? Don't mock it till you try it. <laughs> or whatever. Nice. Looks like a big meatball right now. I can make a big meat. I can make a big meatball. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So it's like that. See that? Look how nice that is. Cut this in three right now. It's not always easy to get it even, but you can always cheat, you know? Not cheat, but take, like, the middle will always be longer because it's round. So, you gotta click OK. Divide this in three. And then what I do is I'll take a little off the end from the center because that's got more. I'll take half and put on that end and the half on this end. And if one's a little bigger, that's OK because I like it small. I don't need a lot. All right, so that's what it's about. Wow. See how nice that picked up, people? Not even stuck here in the bowl. Now you take this. Now I'm going to form my meatloaf. I'm going to use a meatloaf pan. I'm done by my hands. <laughs> this is cool. You want to start forming it so it's, you know, it's flattened. Well, this is how I do mine. I'm going to start forming it. And then you'll see. I do try to get it oblong. It's pretty funny here, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> A little sense of humor when we have fun here. Well, it's all gonna take shape. And then, take your plate. All right, slap it down. There you go. See? Let's take your meatballs. That one there should have been a little wider, but I can do. I can do it. It'll be fine. Let me just smash it how I like it. Don't like it thick. Because when it bakes in the oven, from the bread, you know, bread has yeast in it, it's going to rise. So it's going to be thicker. 
Not no six to eight inch stick though. I'm not into that stuff. I don't care for that crap like that. So basically, there's one. One down, two to go. You'll have to, I can't turn the plate on because my hands are dicky. What do you want me to do, turn it like the, this? Yeah, you'll see how it looks, you know? You're not gonna get it perfect. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here getting it perfectly even because it's not about perfect, it's about, it's all handmade. That's cool, all right. And then we'll slide that one over and grab another plate. And... There you go. And take the center. Let's see how nice everyone it don't stick to the bowl. This little bit is nothing. I'll just pick it up. There we go. Maybe it's better here, huh? Same crap, just the same stuff. Set it on your plate, and then just this one that looks like it's this one is better than the first one to be honest. Like, but it's you know this is about handmade, you know, and that they're not all to be alike. Mm-hmm. Doesn't smell good, but man, this smells very good. <laughs> it's gonna be real good. So nice. See, when stuff, when you go to the stores, I'm just saying that people buy just frozen crap. Well, yeah, everything's alike. Why? Because it's done in a plant or factory or whatever. There they go. Machines are doing it. So, yeah, everything is identical. When you're doing homemade, it ain't going to be. It's not going to be that way. There's two. I'll just slide the third plate over. It doesn't matter if it's a little. That one you can push over. I'm doing the right, that's turn good. for that's it. Good. You so. don't have to. A video. Put the video after on all three of them. Add up. All right. Last one. <laughs> Throw that in there. Oh, very nice. Push that out. This little smaller one that's good because I always try to make myself a smaller piece. I can never eat a whole one anyhow. There's no way it's not happening. I always do. Because uh, I'll have other stuff with this, as you guys will see. It's just it's like we're not eating meatloaf. So nice. Make a form of oblong. And there you go. Just set it on a plate. And you work with it like that. So you are. So two pounds of meat and the bread, and then you season the, I use two eggs, 16 slices of white bread. My choice is nickels. Maybe you guys would like something else. It has to be white bread though. Any other bread, see it's gonna make that heavy too. Don't use Italian or Vienna or anything. Stick with white bread. Normally do I eat white bread? No, I like Vienna. I like Italian, I like French bread. But for meatloaf, I think to have it light texture, and also it, it rises, the meatloaf. You'll see it and I keep it light and fluffy when you eat it, it's not heavy and use white bread. So there you are. So we're gonna have one, two, and they're all different. It's fine. And three. <laughs> and there's my meatloaf. Yep, and, and three. Um, now all I have to do is cover those. Put them in the fridge, probably for like 12 hours, and I will show you guys tomorrow no when I take them out of the refrigerator and I just like, I, I'm going to cover them right now, leave them on individual plates of course, like they are, cover them with saran wrap, and I'll show you tomorrow when I remove them from the fridge and I'll take that plastic off, wait do you see how nice, you know, they. They formed because they, they're nice and cold. They're colder. They're cold now. I mean, the meat's cold. But coming out of the fridge and how nice they stick together. And I 
you'll see the finish tomorrow how I when I put them in the pan and when I take them out of the fridge. And then we put them in the oven. And I'll put them in the oven. Mm. And I'll tell you how long I bake it and stuff like that. And then I'll show you when I take it out. And I'll show you what, what we eat, what I'd like to prepare. Maybe what, I don't even have any idea what, besides potatoes, of course, what else I'm going to have along with this meatloaf. All right, so um, we will continue this tomorrow. And I'm ready. I can't wait to... See what this is gonna look like when we take it out of the fridge. Oh, no. All, right. All right, we'll be back with part three or round three, whatever you want to call you know, it. Like it is actually, you know, round one was the first pound of meat prepared. Yep. Then, cut, then shall I just repeat, but the second pound, you know, do two pounds of meat, but one pound, then one pound again. So yeah, basically, it is like a second part but a third section or something like mm. that yeah <laughs> all right so catch y'all tomorrow okay here we are a new day 12 hours later as i stated and unwrap my meatloaf like i said we want to plate leave it 12 hours before i bake it i'll put it on top of this one it will not smash it <laughs> it doesn't matter it's so nice just lift it off the plate and it did give it a little more color like the you see now the paprika, which is the mm -hmm. red red uh, crushed peppers. Made a little pinker. So it goes so one. Good. It smells so good. It really smells great, my gosh. Like I said, they need to do something with phones, right? With all this modern technology. Let's get some what is it? Smell a phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smell of food, whatever. Okay, let's stick the second one. Same thing. Looks really great. See, and they should lift off the plate like this. If it sticks, I'm telling you, it's no good. There's two. There's that. One more. Here we go. Last one. And they will puff up somewhat, but this is how I like my meatloaf. Okie doke. Cool as a cucumber today. Okie dokie, mm -hmm. artichokey. Okay, here we go. There, there we go. Three. One, three amigo no, amigos. Three, whatever, in the in the pan. Let me just wipe my hands. Meat loaves. Wipe my hands and uh and if you look back on my video, I do not use oil. This is spraying water in the pan. Yep. You know how much grease comes out of meat? It's it's sick, you know. People I just cook in water. Well not cook. Oven, whatever, roast, everything's in water. And you, 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 all the grease will be in the pan. It's sick. That's how much grease is in meat. And people just cook in oil, oil or whatever, lard and stuff. Screw that. Okie dokie. And then I even tried. Look. Good old fashioned quality is back. See that muscle check? No. <laughs> I usually use Red Old Sprout. There's a store up here. Heinen's. Hey, hey, Heinen's brothers. You try this foil, I'm trying it. It's not bad, but I think I'll stick to Reynolds. Next time, it's okay. So, yeah, that was kind of screwed out. It's it was all right, funny. it's okay. It's all right, it's okay. And then, just cover it with foil. Oops. Let's turn this this way now. All I do is cover the foil. And that's it for now, guys. I'm gonna cut it with foil. I'm gonna put it in the oven. Well, I do it. You guys try to, oh, your meatloaf's gotta be dry. No, it's not. I do it four hours because there's pork, veal, and beef. Pork has to be cooked well, beef, and I don't know. But so, two hours on one side, two hours on the other side. And what do you see? It'll be great. All right, so I'll talk to you guys. I'll see you when I'm. I guess either want to take this out of the oven or ready to eat dinner tonight. Yep, I'm just taking them out of the ovens the next step. Right, exactly. Unless you want to film it going in. <laughs> That's fine, I know what oven is. Okay. 
that's it. I'm going to put it in the oven. See you guys later. All right. I can't wait to see what this is going to be like when it comes out. All right. Meatloaf is done. Let's see how it looks. Let me see. I know it smells really bad, really good now because it's all prepared. There you go. <laughs> Not that typical meatloaf, like I said, that people use it on a meatloaf pan. The bread pan, there we go. And see, people, if you if you listen to the whole video, I told you I use water. See, this is the reason why. Stuff you see floating around is probably bread, obviously bread that escapes, you know, from the meatloaf. And but look at the grease in that pan, and it's all done in water. This is why you don't, you know, don't, I'm not, I don't like grease or fats, and that's what came out of the meat, too, the meatloaf mix, which is the pork, veal, and ground beef. It's a meatloaf mix. Let's see the grease. So anyhow, that's all prepared there. It's all finished. And there's some mashed potatoes. And cut of lettuce, tomato, cucumber, green onions, radishes. My next step is preparing this all putting it together on our dinner plates. I'm getting hungry. I'm hungry too. <laughs> and I know it'll be good. Okay, people. My meatloaf is all done and prepared. I have it served on a plate. That's how mine looks inside. I'll slice a slice here. There we go. And you can see the top is nice and juicy. It's very tender. That's how it looks. And there's some mashed potatoes with country crock and black pepper. And I made a fresh iceberg salad. It's hard to see. There's cucumbers, there's green onion, and radish and tomato. And then T here, he's going to mix today Hidden Valley Ranch dressing. And then I found this some um, bacon ranch. I'm sorry, bacon ranch, Hidden Valley bacon ranch, and jalapeno ranch. So I'm going to try a combo of that. And then myself, of course, see, I don't eat a lot, as long <laughs> never do. There's mine, half, I just do half, same thing, I slice. It's very tender though, very nice, juicy, looks good. There we go, potatoes, the same dressing. I use creamy French, how's that, dressing? And then we just have, there's one more plate. That's our dinner tonight. <laughs> Missing our drink, I should go with that while you're doing that. And then this is Papa G's plate. That meatloaf is full, not cut, with potatoes and the salad. With, with the three dressings to choose from. My drinks, these are cups with the drinks off. Mine already froze. I love everything frozen. I had A and W caffeine free root beer. See here we'll have Snapple Peach. And this mm. guy here. I bought Bye. It's Raspberry Super Tea. For Papa Tea. <laughs> and we're all good. So I hope everybody enjoyed my video. And maybe one time I could do something baking. Might be a while, but I'd like to do that one day. So I hope you all enjoy it. And um, like I said, maybe next one will be baking. Or, you know, I'm planning on something fun. I'm not going to say what it is, but that could be too. Maybe after um, New Year's Day. Mm, I'm hoping maybe for before, some baking. Maybe before, maybe after. We'll see how it goes. So we'll have, we'll have a fun video. And I'd like to do one of baking. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And I will... Plan on seeing you soon. Maybe, well, actually, be next year. So you know what? Happy, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, everyone. I'm gonna take you know the holiday, and plan on doing something next year. And we are ready to eat. Yum. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.